already been flanged on the lightning holes that needs the edge flanges done. If it's lined up with our references. These pins are made from quarter inch bolts. They just keep everything referenced. The clamps go on to hold things in place as well as to make sure that this top cover is down snugly on the edge here so we don't uh, have a soft edge formed. One more clamp in the center here. And we'll have to move that around while we're forming that flange. There we go. It's not that your hands are at risk here, it's just it's a fair amount of vibration from the riveter. All right. We're using a flow forming head on the rivet gun. This is a 4X uh, gun from ATS and uh, that's your flow forming head. Pick up some burrs around the edge, you just need to keep those dressed down. And we'll start from the center out in each direction to go ahead and start forming the flange. First pass is at an angle that is probably about 10 degrees and then we'll just keep working that angle until we get to probably about 25-30 uh, degrees. We'll move this clamp, form this center section and then uh, move this down until we get about a 60 degree uh, flange form. Then we'll go in with the dead blow hammer. This is a Proto 21 ounce that has the narrow head on one end, uh, wider head on the other. Seems to work pretty well for this. Alright, let's get to work. Recess here formed at the edge. This is a joggle so that the spar um, flanges fit over this rib a little bit uh, closer and we end up not having to accommodate that skin thickness hop over the spar. So that's why we're paying a little bit more attention right in here because that's actually where that joggle sits.
this out of the way. Move it over. Let's get that other area in here. gets that edge formed well enough where we can handle the rest of it on the uh, on the Vans, uh, the VHF, uh, the uh, Vans Air Force uh, flange straightening tool, which I don't know who invented that, but this is a real good tool for uh, following up on this stuff. I'm just going to move this down a little bit. Get in here if there's any little wiggles on the edge. Here. Always your stroke should be down to carry that metal over. Tighten that up again. again. Alright. 
that edge is formed. We'll do the same thing on the other side and pull things out. A little bit more curvature on this side so there's going to be a lot more uh, uh, waviness in the edge short of fluting this as you go you're going to see that I found that you're better off getting this down to about where uh, you can get it with a hammer and then coming back in with a flange straightener doing the flange straightening and then come in with the uh, fluter after you've done your final shaping and clean up on these areas here where you've got the joggle. So this is an early version of a joggle block that had a uh, uh, recess in here and since then I've gone to separate uh, blocks for each of these uh, upper and lower joggles, left and right hand, that seems to work a little bit better. So anyways, but uh, that works okay. You want to do them. Uh, you've just got to do that before you put the flutes in here. You can see that uh, this surface doesn't have any accommodation for flutes. Okay.
All right. And before we pull the uh, cover plate on the forming uh, form, <laughs> we need to mark the um, location of the flutes on each side. We do that uh, with a red pen. One of the other things we have is some of this plastic is going to come off during forming. Um, primarily do the flow forming. So here's a good time to just come in and use a razor blade to get that excess stuff off. Careful that you don't end up uh, scratching up the aluminum and have to polish out those scratches. I'm being careful not to get those scratches in. Cut plastic, not the aluminum. Aluminum has a pretty shallow critical crack depth, so uh, that can be a problem. You think you got a just a minor little scratch and over time vibration and uh, flex is going to go ahead and open that crack up and then you got to go in and hopefully you pick it up on an annual and you can uh, have the distinct pleasure drilling out all those rivets or uh, maybe going in there and doing a, a patch over that section of the rib. Most of that stuff's off. My rib locate, they're rather uh, my rivet locations are marked with black lines here. The red is where I've got a flute that's located. So we'll just go ahead and mark those flutes on each side. And that will set us up for the all the post forming uh, cleanup. Because we're going to get this rib out of here and we're going to find out that it's done a pretty good job of potato chipping for us. So obviously this can take some work to clean up. Plus we want these joggles to be <coughs> excuse me, just so with regard to uh, how they're going to fit that, that uh, uh, main spar. We're not taking all this plastic off, but just enough where we can get marks on here that are not going to be problematic. It's not everywhere that the plastic gets beaten up enough where it comes off. plastic you can keep on, the longer the plastic uh, stays on, less likely it is. You know, spend a lot of time cleaning up uh, scratches and scuffs and uh, dings on the, this nice polished aluminum surface that uh, we have. Yeah, we got to degloss it to go ahead and get primer on, but uh, we don't want to have to work out a bunch of scratches, particularly not in 25 thousandths material. All right. Man, this standing pad here helps out a lot in terms of knees on concrete in this basement shop. One thing you should think about in any shop is a raised wood floor if you can work it out. Sometimes it's just not doable. Alright, so you're going to have to pop these pins out. They're pretty tight in here because the aluminum has been distorted. So what I'm going to do is start from this side, tap that pin out. I'm going to stop tapping before I hit the rib itself. You probably want to keep these faces pretty smooth so you're actually better off using 
something like one of these uh, thorax hammers. It's got a soft face and a nice hard face. Some mojo. There we go. That's good. So cover comes off. And you'll see we got this nice pretzel grip there. More pretzeling here than here because this is a little bit straighter uh, contour line up there, but uh, we got a nice crisp, fair blend here. Looks pretty good, and that should allow us to clean things up. Not too much distortion in these holes. Again, once you're through with these index holes, um, unless you're using them like on the nose ribs for alignment, uh, then you can clean them up and and if they have to be reamed uh, 64th oversized to smooth them out, that shouldn't be a real big deal, provided you've got other ways to handle alignment. I think that's about it.